not quite sure where to start on this one. Guys, this is, has to be the proudest day of my life. Senator, Yamaha and Simrad have all come on board as major sponsors for the new boat build and I, I, I just I really don't know what to say. It would be the proudest proudest day of my life. Massive thanks to all you guys for all your support. Without Senator Yamaha or Simrad and our other sponsors, and along with you guys, none of this would have happened. And it's so awesome to have your support and you guys along for this journey of my new boat build. It's been a long project, the uh, build of a new boat. And it all started back in uh, one of the last videos I did, which was uh, the boat show flashback. 690 Senator, and we're having a bit of a gander through this. It's actually what I'm looking to upgrade to. And that was 2019, I started talking with Senator about doing a new boat build. It was planned to be a 690 build. Well, COVID hit and everything else hit, and then from there, the years have just dragged on. And to be fair, I've wanted a 770 for a long time. Still in my personal mind, it is the ultimate Kiwi diving and fishing platform. Safe for your family, heaps of room, and it just suits our trips and what we do. My 650 is, the, is an awesome boat. The amount of overnighting we do, we just want a bit more comfort, a bit more room. I want to be able to take Dad out more before he can't really get out on the water. Grant from Senator came down during the running and trials of Dan's RH800 Senator. Came down, we had a bit of a chat and caught up. That's when the plan started to come up and build a 770. Well, two years have passed now. There's been a lot of planning of drawn everything up from scratch. Basically two years ago I started drawing and planning this boat build and over the two years there's been a lot of concept drawings, a lot of bits and pieces. Classic old blue thunder here. This is originally the first book that I started doing all the drawings and, and coming up with the design of the boat. The first original helm so in that two years I've changed it. I wasn't going to have an oven there, wasn't going to have drawers, gear drawers there, drawer for cooker rocket launches so a heap of rocket launches the bait board so it's originally going to be very similar to uh, defiant and next is all the list of the bits for the boat build what i was going to put in building defiant was quite easy because i just changed a few things on dan monopoly's boat that i didn't like and then just added it to the 650. i didn't do a lot of upgrades originally i got a lot of stuff done after market and i seriously regretted that because a it cost more money b the workmanship didn't wasn't really as good as it would have got been straight out of the factory so in hindsight i wish right from the word go i paid that extra money and got those upgrades done directly at the factory and the funny thing is you'd think Building a bigger boat, going to a 770, I thought it would probably be quite easy. I could go and check out Vaughan's boat. I can go and check out Dan Fisher's boat and then come up with your own ideas. Still have not, having a 770, it's still quite hard to build it, if that makes sense. I could rebuild a 650 now and add all the bits that I wanted because I've had the 650, I know the changes. But because I haven't had a 770, it's not the same as going on other people's boats. You kind of see their ideas and think it's gonna work, but the ideas you wanna implement, you're not sure if they're actually gonna work. So actually going through the 770 build has been a long process. And as I said, I started drawing this up two years ago and now over the two years it's evolved and changed coming up with the helm side working out all the drawers there and that sort of carry on designing the drawers design the helm pod um, working with the Simrad products to go in as well and the whole layout rod holders as well changing the rod holders from Defiant they all worked really well but it's trying to actually come up with a, the few things that you know are going to work a bit better adding more Rod holders, as you know, I've got about a billion rods, so taking them all out there, you don't use most of them, but you've got them there just in case. So the whole process is actually quite a hard process, if that makes sense. But you can never have enough rod holders. And to be fair, this new rig, there's gonna be a serious amount of rod holders. The whole goal of this is I'm gonna try and utilize every bit of space and do the design options that suit gear I use. Senators sent me the specs for the helm and what I can work with on the helm. So the plan is on this one, I'm actually going to get all my tackle trays, I'm going to measure them up, work out the depth I've got, and I'm actually going to design the drawers out of cardboard to the specs of my tackle trays so I can optimise that space for all my tackle trays and my gear. Yes, it probably does sound a little crazy to actually be making boxes I want to utilize all that space and it to suit all the gear we use. First things first then, let's 
make a draw. The purpose now is to try and fit five tackle trays in here and then work out what space I've got left and then get containers or storage to fit that space. So the plan is I'm going to make up a drawer here, draw size that's going to work and hopefully fit in, send it to Senator and see if they can make that work. That is the drawer size. So I can fit two of those in and then the top drawer is going to be smaller and that's going to be for the rigging components. So that is the helm station. Oven, four drawers, swab, uh, driver's seat. Lighting is a major thing. Defiant's got pretty epic lighting on it, but it's not quite enough. I want the ability to be able to change like the underwater lights between green and white. Blue we've found to be absolutely hopeless for bait fishing or live bait, catching live bait, especially down here in the south. I did a lot of research and found all the underwater lights for catching bait fish in America are all green. They use green lights. Or of course also squid light, the white light. And funny enough, I've got blue underwater lights. We've seen this, you actually turn the blue water under lights on and it'll scare the mackerel away. Even in Kinaparu, the blue light would scare the seven gill sharks away when they were up on the surface. So I want the ability to get rid of blue underwater lights. Yes, they are cool. They are a cool travel light, but they're not effective in the South Island for bait fish. Green is way better. And how I've actually worked this out too is tying up next to Vaughan and his 770. He has got green LEDs across the top of his hard top. So it illuminates the whole boat green. And we've got the white under my hard top on my side. Out my side of the boat with the blue underwater lights on there is no bait fish. You jump onto Vaughan's boat with the green, he's got all the bait fish outside of his boat. So we've actually proven this on 10 or 20 trips that the green is far superior than the blue. Blues just doesn't seem to work here. Might do in the rest of New Zealand but in the South Island up around Derval and that down the sounds it just actually scares the fish away. So with the lighting I want the ability to be able to change. So I need to work out a company that I can use to change between green, blue, pink whites, oranges, whatever to suit the situation. If we're squid fishing, I'll put white on. If we're bait fishing, green. Travelling, blue or a different colour as a rear light. And the other thing too is lots of lighting through the boat. Because I've got that white um, LED strip across the back, it's better than deck lights, but I want the ability to have a red one there or a dimmer one. When you're night fishing, lights are actually a key thing because we're lot, quite often we're fishing overnight, all night. So I want to be able to have the ability to change the colours and the lights. When I did have that multicolour strip fishing at night, dimming it down to that purple or the blue and dimming them right down it was just enough ambient light that it wasn't too bright for you but you could you could function and do the bits you want to do I need to really research on this the lighting I'm going to use for the boat I'm going to start now drawing up all the positions of the lighting and where they're going to go and then it's just a matter of going and researching the lighting I'm going to put all the brand lighting I'm going to put into the boat since the first design layout it's completely all changed now the new book it's just loaded with ideas concept drawings and there's drawings and behind drawings of drawings yeah the ideas I've got are out of control actually I've got plenty of design options and hopefully we can make it all work with Senator it's so awesome to have all you guys along for this journey for the new boat build and like I said it's the the proudest day of my life to have Senator come on board as a major sponsor. Yamaha, the mighty Yamaha on board. Last motor doing three and a half thousand hours. My current 225 has done 1500 hours flawlessly, not missed a single beat. And also Simrad Electronics. So, uh, you know, I just couldn't be prouder, guys, to have these powerhouses on board for this build. And I just can't wait to show you the end product of all my uh, crazy design options that I've come up with.